Allah. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد As we continue this great treatise by the great Imam Abu al-Abbas Taqi al-Din Ahmed ibn Abd al-Hameen ibn Abd al-Sanan ibn Taymiyah al-Harwani al-Dimashqi rahimahullah Umar Uda 728 at the inauguration of our Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. In this great book, Al-Aqidah, which is from the books that you'll find that the scholars develop the students and knowledge upon in order to attain the highest levels of education in regards to the Aqidah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam and the defense of the pure Islam, the pure creed. You'll find, like we said, these are from those great treaties that the students and knowledge in order to develop and gradually reach the level of scholarly caliber, you'll find that we mentioned that these are the books that the ulama cultivate them upon, especially for those who want to specialize in this field of creed. So we finalized the statement, or excuse me, rather we almost finished the statement of Ibn Khafif. You'll find that Shaykh al-Islam, like we mentioned everyone, was citing his statement. We reached the part where he was speaking about all the different aspects of creed in which the Muslims in history had fell into mukhalafat. They, found, they fell into oppositions and affairs that opposed the pure creed. And you'll find that we mentioned Shaykh al-Islam was citing his statement in order to establish upon his adversaries or those who are in opposition that this is the creed that your own scholar is upon and that he's adhering to. He spoke about the affairs pertaining, for example, uh, the hadith of Surah. Remember we spoke about that before the days of the Hijjah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah created Adam upon his image. We explained that narration, right everyone? We finished that. And he spoke about the affairs of Imam. For example, Ibn Khafif, rahimahullah, he said, ثُمَّ ذَكَرُ الْخِلَافِ فِي الْإِمَامَةِ وَاحْتَجَّ عَلَيْهَا وَذَكَرَ اتِّفَاقَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ عَلَى التَّقْدِيمَ السِّدِّيمَ For example, he said, he mentioned the difference. And he started talking about the difference amongst Ahl Sunnah. He started about, like we said, generally, how the Muslims left off what was correct in certain aspects until they became from those Ahzab, they became from those confederates or those parties. He said, mention the Khilaf and Imam. And what he used as a proof upon it of what was correct, which is, what, then he goes on to say, that the agreements of the Muhajirin, those who migrated from Mecca to Al Medina and the Ansar, those who received them, upon giving precedence to Siddiq, Abu Bakr Siddiq. So he's mentioned the correct creed. He's mentioned in the correct creed that this is what the pure Islam is. And that anyone that opposes that are not upon the correct Islam and its understanding. And if you hear a Muslim saying, no, Abu Bakr Siddiq, we don't give precedence to him, then we know that that person is not upon the correct creed. So that's the reason, like we mentioned everyone, he's mentioning this. And like we said, Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah, Rahimallah, the citing the statement of Ibn Khafif. Then he goes on to say, and that he's the most virtuous of this ummah. Then he continues to say, which is Allah. We already mentioned this. Then he said, then he mentioned the difference, meaning those who deviated away from the proper creed and the creations of what everyone, the actions of the servants. We talked about that already. So let's keep going. Let's go down. ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ الْخِلَافِ فِي أَهْلِ الْكَبَائِرِ وَمَسْأَلَةَ الْأَسْمَاءِ وَالْأَحْكَامِ This is where we stopped last class before the 10 days of the Hijjah. He said, then he mentioned the khilaf amongst the people of major sins. Amongst the people of major sins and the affair of al-asma. What is the proper name they are given? 
And what is their ruling? Are they outside the fold of Islam? Are they in the fold of Islam or considered complete in faith, even though they commit major sins or what have you? So that was also an affair that those who are in opposition fell into what everyone fell into some type of deviation from the Muslims who left off the proper belief in regards to how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi believed and any companions. وَقَالْ قَوْلُنَا إِنَّهُمْ مُؤْمِنُونَ عَلَى الْإِطْلَاقِ He said, our statement is that they generally have faith and that their affair is, is to Allah. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do we want? If He wills, He'll punish them or if He wills, what? He'll pardon them. That's what we mentioned in summary. That's what we mentioned in summary last class. Everyone follow me? You understand so far? Right, so let's return a little to the affair which pertains to what we want. Excuse me. I'm on my page. Good. We talked about the affair of name, the names, and the ahkam. What is the ruling in regards to the major sin? We talked about how the tricks of the devil was to what we want come to the human being and the children of Adam and to fall into either what they call ifrat or tafrit. Ifrat or tafrit. Ifrat meaning being too high in belief. And tafrit is neglection or neglect, being too cold or lax. Ifrat is surpassing the bounds. And if you want to say in simple terms, or what have you, just to keep it simplistic for everyone, that if Allah is being too hot, where a person transgresses the bounds. Tafrit is being too negligent, being too lax. The word tafrit. So shaitan always comes to the children of Adam, setting the trap, enabling them to either fall into those one extremes, as we mentioned. Right, everyone? And that's what we said at last class. But Ibn Khafif was mentioned in this in order to establish upon his followers that I'm upon what the pure Islam is upon in these regards. So number one, he said, for example, Verily they are believers generally. This is what I wanted to mention last class and we'll take the initiative to mention it now again. We talked about this maybe last year. You have what they call mutlaq al-iman and al-iman al-mutlaq. For a major sinner in Islam, as we mentioned, a major sinner, or a person that commits open major sins, or open sins generally, without hiding it or concealing it. As we know also that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and you from being tested in our religion, our uprightness, but if Allah subhanahu if one is tested, the origin is what everyone to conceal it. Right? That's the also. We're supposed to what? Conceal our faults. We're not to supposed to what everyone publicize it or announce it. That's from what Allah has commanded. And that's what the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded. That if we fall into sins, if we are tested, we're being tested in our uprightness with Allah. The also is we're supposed to what everyone conceal it. Due to the hadith as we know that Kullu Ummati Mu'afan illa Mujahi. All of my Ummah will be excused or pardoned except those who broadcast their sins. So if one is tested in that regard, then like we said, they're supposed to conceal it. Fine. What is the name though? Then that's when you'll find that Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah mentions these words, such as Mutlaqul Iman and Imanun Mutlaq. Mutlaqul Iman and Imanun Mutlaq. Now if a person falls into this, we see them to be from the sinners of the, of the Muslims. That person, as long as they do not believe it to be lawful what they're doing, then they're still whatever you want. They're still in the fold of Islam. Do we say that he's mu'minun iman and kamila? Do we say that he's a believer, complete in his faith? We say what? No. However, he com- however he has what they call mutlaqul iman. 
Mutlaqul Iman means, just to keep it simple, Asl Iman. The origin of faith is still there. Mutlaqul Iman just means Asl Iman. Mutlaqul Iman means Asl Iman. Means the origin of faith. Meaning he's still Muslim. As long as he does not believe what he's doing or she is doing is what? Lawful. And if they say that what they're doing is lawful, then the other conditions of takfir needs to be investigated. Such as iqamat al-hujjah, establishing the proof. So you know, Islam does just doesn't hesitate, of course, I'm, excuse me, rush to declare someone out the fold of Islam. But the affairs are like this. The person that commits major sins, and we know them to be upon that affair, of course, then we say they have with them mutlaqul iman. They have with them the origin of faith. You understand everyone? Mutlaqul iman means aslul iman. But they do not have what they call imanun mutlaq. Iman mutlaq means imanun kamil. Imanun mutlaq means complete faith. So, they have mutlaqul iman, but they don't have what? Imanul mutlaq. You get it? They have with them mutlaqul iman, aslul iman, but they do not have iman mutlaq, which is iman what? Kamal. And we know the narrations in this regard. When the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu for example, says, لَا يُؤْمِنُ أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى يُحِبَّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِهِ None of you truly believe. The Messenger of Allah is negating faith. For a person that does not understand these two categories, I just explained to you, then they would consider that person to be outside the fold of Islam. None of you believe until he loves for his brother, what? For he wants for himself. Is the message of Allah here talking about mutlaqul iman or iman mutlaq? Which one? You guys should be even hesitating. Iman mutlaq. Complete faith. So if you are a person that's very selfish, always thinking about yourself, then we know Islam tells us to rid ourselves of these type of qualities. They're very what? They're very condemned. They're highly dispraiseworthy and condemned in our religion. However, the message of Allah here, is he negating the origin of faith in this narration? No. What is he affirming and what is he negating? He's negating here what everyone? That one's faith is what? Complete. Meaning, if you do not want with your brother what you want for yourself or your sister or what have you, your faith is what? It's incomplete. Your faith is incomplete. So that is the affairs of what? Now, if the person falls into sin, likewise, as we mentioned last class, we do not give them to say that they're mu'min, iman and iman and mutlaq. That they're mu'min, where their faith is complete. No. We say what do we want? Naqisul Iman or Mu'min Naqisul Iman. That is a Mu'min generally, but he's still a what? His faith is incomplete. As we mentioned in this last class. We mentioned this in brief. But no problem that we, like we said, just reiterate some of what we spoke about last class. No problem. But, so everyone understood those two points Mutlaqul Iman and Iman Mutlaq. Also Iman or Iman Kamil. Is it clear? Good. In regards to the sects that had went astray in this regard, we called them last class Al-Wa'idiyah. Al-Wa'idiyah. Why are they called Wa'id? Wa'idiyah. The word Wa'id in Arabic, every, everyone means warnings. The affairs pertaining to a warning. So Wa'id is a severe warning. Wa'id. But why are these deviant sects, as you'll find in Shaykh al Islam, which is the al Wasiqiyah, called them Wa'idiyah? Wa'idiyah, everyone, is those who cling to the text pertaining to the punishment of Allah due to sins that people commit, forgetting about the what, everyone? The text of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not taking the modern approach and the modern belief in that regard. Basically, being too extreme. To the point where they just totally cut off hope for those who come have the inspiration to return back to the truth by making proper repentance. 
Basically, there's no chance for them. It's over. They're non-Muslim. They're out the fold of Islam. And in this world, they're considered either a disbeliever. And based upon the belief of the Mu'tazila, they're in a state between two states. And this is what we spoke about last class. All of them are under the same banner, everyone, called the Wa'idiyya. The Wa'idiyya. Meaning, those who are in the, the extreme of affirming and believing in the punishment of Allah for sinners that commit certain acts and sins, whereas they, these individuals believe that there's no chance for them. Even if they make tawbah. They're a disbeliever in this world until the point where you find, like we said, the, the people of the Khawarij, or during the time of the Sahaba, they were called what, everyone? What they were called? We talked about their name. Haruri. Haruri, they, they were upon the affair pertaining that if a person commits an act in this world, they're what, everyone? Kafir. Disbeliever. And his blood is lawful, his life can be ended, and his wealth is lawful, and his honor is what? Lawful. All those affairs become useless, or if you want to say, there's no value, or there's no type of uh, validity, or there's no type of value to it at all. Rather, he could be killed, murdered, looted, oppressed, to the end of it. Similar to what they did with who? Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu. When they came in, and he disrespected his wife and violated her. If you look to the story, it was very, very disrespectful. Violated his wife, and they cut him his, wife, his hand while the blood was falling on the Mus'haf. How you disrespect a companion that the Messenger of Allah said that the angels were shot from. That you disrespect, disrespect a man to that point and cause him this type of injustice. But these are type of affairs, brothers and sisters, is why we're, we're teaching this class. Because this is what they fell into, and as a result, they fell into what? Becoming detrimental against society. Where they now set out to end innocent lives and wreak havoc and mayhem upon what? Society. Killing innocent bystanders, innocent people. And like we said, we see the effects of it from time to time. And how many of us have heard for the years these type of people emerge and kill innocent people, not by the thousands, sometimes by the hundreds of thousands. And in their lives, and they think that they're drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by that affair. And those matters are very well, that is considered the most furthest of being astray. Drawing close to something, drawing close to Allah by something that angers him is the most most humiliating and the most what? Well, considered the most deprived or the most heinous of act that you draw close to your Lord by something that angers him. That If that's not considered further astray or far astray than what is, then a person is considered upon dalal in that type of regard. So that's the reason why we're speaking about these matters. And why Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah was citing the statement of Ibn Khafif in this regard. Why? He's saying the wa'idiyah went, went astray in regards to the text pertaining to the wa'id of Allah, the warning of Allah, being too extreme in that, until they declare them to be outside the fold of Islam. No chance for them, and there's no repentance. Tayyip. He said, and we'll just mention this statement quickly. Ibn Khafif, he goes on to say, in the dunya, you'll find that they Break down the two types. We know the kufar, they, excuse me, I'm sorry everyone, the khawadij, they believe he's a disbeliever in this world, the person that commits a major sin. His, his iman is negated completely, outside the world of Islam. And we know that the affairs pertaining to the khawadij of today is pertaining to more political. If you believe that that tahu, leader of that country, is Muslim, then you're not Muslim either. If you believe that Tawhut, and, that, and this is how they speak, you believe he's Muslim, that means you're not Muslim. Your blood is lawful, and your money is lawful, your wealth is lawful, and then even the shaitan takes it to the uh, affairs of your family. To even impede on killing your, your own wife and children and all these other things. And I've heard stories where they actually kill their own parents. They kill their, their own parents. How the devil can what? How he could trick one and form this type of what? Misguidance. It's very dangerous. Extremely. If a person doesn't understand the aqeed as a Muslim, understanding the proper text of Kitab al Sunnah, then these type of errors are what? Expected for them to fall into. And that's the reason why the people of the Sunnah take the proper time to educate the, pe- educate the people in these regards because they are of the utmost importance these days. Because you hear 
the affairs of takfir, and know for sure, brothers and sisters, that the people who are talking like this, especially in social media now, always talking about those tawhut and those rulers, and not realizing that a lot of these affairs are monetarily assisted by the non-Muslims and the CIA financing these matters. They pay them for these matters to keep the Muslims weak, separated, divided, and to keep them what? Confused. And you'll find this, a lot of people are affected by this these days. Especially what's going on in Palestine, taking advantage of these matters in order to what? So-called capitalizing upon perverted ideologies and spreading it amongst the Muslims. Why isn't Saudi doing anything? Why isn't this Muslim country doing anything? See those Tawahid? And you're with those Tawahid? Not realizing that these people that are on these interviews, brothers and sisters, they're funded by the non-Muslims. They monetarily give them money to propagate and put in the minds of the Muslims these type of ideologies. To keep them at bay and weak while they're, while they're being succumbed by these satanic beliefs. And as a result of it, the Muslims remain what? Weak and separated and divided. Is it clear, everyone? And like we said, this, these type of interviews in this type of speech, you believe in that tall hoot in Saudi Arabia? If you don't believe he needs to be overthrown, you're a Catholic just like him. You'll find that this speech is widespread. These are the ideologies of the Khawarij. These are the ideologies of the dogs of hell that the Messenger of Allah warned against. Is it clear, everyone? Good. So, what we were saying about this, <coughs> that the Wa'idiyah from the Khawarij, and if you want to call them Irhabiyya, or Irhabiyun, the word is different, but the ideology is the same. Irhab just means terrorist, or Irhabi. Irhabi means like a terrorist, but it's still Khadij, same thing. Those type of people, for the Muslims that commit major sins, and it was weird, and we'll talk about this later when we have some more time, how the Khawarij and the people that have adopted their ideologies of today have gathered between both extremes at the same time. And this is to let you know how far astray they've become. How is it that you're upon Khadijia, but then you have the, the ideologies of what opposes your belief and, and practice that at the same time? And I'll explain it and elaborate it in a minute. So, the Khawarij of today, or the people of Irhab of today, so you'll find that their belief, you believe in a Tawhud, do you believe he's a Muslim? Person commit major sins? You're outside the fold of Islam? And in the hereafter, that person is what everyone? In the hellfire forever. طيب. The Mu'tazila believes the person that commits the major sin, then what everyone? He's in a state between two states. He's not Muslim, but he's not Catholic. Which there's no deal for that. And in the hereafter, he, he, he agrees with the what? Or they agree rather with the who? The Khawaj. That they abide in hell forever. Is it clear, everyone? Good. Notice that he goes on to say, Insha'a'adabahum. The belief of Ahlul Sunnah, what Ibn Khafif was mentioning, and he continues to say, Insha'a'adabahum, wa insha'a'afa'anhum. He said, The affair of Tawbah, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. This is in regards to the person who dies before Tawbah. They die upon a major sin. They never took the proper measures to repent with a proper repentance with his conditions fulfilled. What's their affair, everyone? This statement here. Their affair is if Allah wills, he'll what? Punish them. And if Allah wills, he'll what? Overlook them. Based upon this statement, what does that necessitate? They're still what? They're still Muslim. They're still in the fold of Islam. As long as they don't believe what they were doing, what is what everyone? Halal. A person would say, play if they do. Then the other affair now needs to be what? Established, which is establishing the proof upon them, investigating. See, if, and also the other prerequisites of what they call Ahl Ilm. They call these steps what they call Labud al Istikmal al Shurut or Istifa al Shurut, Wantiha al Mawani or Intifa al Mawani. The conditions of takfir needs to be fulfilled and the barriers that keeps them from being removed out the fold of Islam also has to be what removed. What does he mean? Meaning, he might have a shubha. 
He might have some type of ambiguity and discrepancy in his belief, and he was deceived by evil scholars. He was deceived by them. That's what keeps us as the people of Sunnah from declaring certain people in certain countries still in the fold of Islam, even though they have then fell in the acts that are considered acts that will nullify Islam, such as grave worshiping and major polytheism. That affair, everyone, no doubt, that affair will nullify Islam. Generally, generally I'm saying. However, if we go to the affairs, for example, the country of Egypt, you'll find that a lot of them are upon the belief of the Ashaq. They believe that the affairs pertaining that Allah is not above, oh, I'm sorry, hold on. that Allah is not above, or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have certain names and attributes, and that the Quran is created, and they still believe this to this day. And they have the belief of the Qadr, which is of Jabriya, what they call Kasb al to the end of it. Do we say they're outside the fold of Islam? No. Why? Because for takfir, it has to be fulfilling the conditions of takfir and removing the barriers that keeps them in the fold of Islam. And from those barriers is what everyone, for example, what they call removing the shubha, removing the doubt, and what they call ulama asu, those evil scholars that led them astray. And that's the reason why we don't declare them to be what well, outside the fold of Islam in Egypt, even though some of them have those type of beliefs and some of them fall into grave worship. But we don't hasten towards takfir until these conditions and prerequisites have all have been what? Established. So those affairs are what? Very dangerous, especially if I've heard the saying, oh, if you see him prostrate into a grave, kafir, yachi. What he's doing is an act of kufr, no doubt. But that person that has fell into those type of major atrocities, still you have to establish the what? The proof against them. And not to hasten towards the fear. Good. So it says, the affair pertaining to what? The statement, if Allah wills, he'll punish him. And if Allah will what? If he dies before making proper tawbah, they will be under the will of Allah. And if Allah will see what, what? Pardon. And we know tawbah is accepted from the people of major sins. Especially these days. Tukbal min ashab al The people of Sunnah accept the tawbah from people of major sins. Ida kana tukbal tawbah al kafir. Fama baal tawbah ashab al kabair min baal al awla. The great Imam Muhammad al Jami, rahimahullah, made a very profound statement here. He said, if Tawbah is accepted from a disbeliever, meaning that he converts and he leaves off and abandons polytheism, and he reverts or converts to Islam. If that's in regards to a kafir, he said that how much more did the Tawbah of a person that commits major sins is for all the more reason that his Tawbah is what? It's accepted. Because whoever repents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts their repentance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we know, rejoices at the tawbah of his believing servant. As we know the hadith. That narration, لَاللَّهُ أَفْرَحُ بِتَوْبَةِ عَبْدِهِ مِنْ رَجُلٍ ضَلَّتْ لَهُ رَاحِلَةٌ بِدَوِيَّةٍ مُهْلِكَةٌ عَلَيْهَا طَعَابُهُ وَشَرَابُهُ فَطَلَبَهَا حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ الْجَهْدِ قَالَ أَرْجِعُ مَوْضِعَ الْرَحْمِ أرجع موضع رحلي فأموت فيه فرجع فقام فإذا راحلته عند رأسه عليها طعمه وشربت عند النعيش بس different wording that indeed Allah rejoices at the tawbah of his servant then one of you then a man that his riding beast left off and when astray here means that they been left off and abandoned and it became lost in the middle of a dangerous desolate desert. And upon that riding beast was his food and drink. And he looked for it and sought out to retrieve it. Until he reached that, that state of exhaustion. He gave up by saying, I'll just go back to my place where it was last and I'll just die. And so he went back, he stood, and, or he slept and then woke up in another narration and found, found that his riding beast was next to his head. How did the person be, how his rejoicement was? was something unimaginable. They said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more rejoiceful for the servant that returns back to the truth 
Then this man, that this was his state where he lost his riding beast and then woke up and found it. So those affairs, as we know, everyone, is to let one know that the major sinners, not to give up on them, but to still what? Know that, there's a, that there is still an opportunity in their lives to make up for what they have fell into. And even if they die upon that, then their affairs with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we, we fear upon them. As we know the narration, or the statement we mentioned last class, everyone, that if a person dies upon an evil act, may Allah protect us and you from dying upon an evil way or having an evil ending. But the narration says, if a Muslim or a Mu'min dies in an evil state, we say, نَخَافُ عَلَيْهِ نَخَافُ عَلَيْهِ We don't say definitely, or definitely he's from the inhabitants of hell. No. We say that what? We fear for him. We hope that Allah forgives him. And if a person dies in a, in a good state, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to die in a good state and write for us a good ending. Amen. That even if the person who dies in a righteous state or upon righteousness, we still say, what do we want? Narju lahu khayra. We still don't say that definitely for sure that person is what? In paradise, except who Allah's messenger has informed us. We're talking about people of these days. But those who came after, of course, when revelation was shut. In that type of affair, everyone, we say, well, we don't say that he's definitely in paradise, but what we say, we said, Narju lahu khayra. We hope for him good. We hope for him good. So that's the statements that we make in regards to that particular person, that they die in these two states. But the point of the matter is that after the revelation was shut and the prophetic or the prophethood was completed, it's not for us to say who is what in paradise or who is in what in the hellfire, of course, based upon those affairs, especially for the people of Ahl Qibla, those affairs are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the people of Iman. But in short, that's what we mentioned about the wa'idiyah. So the wa'idiyah, those affairs where they went into the extreme of the aspect of what we want, takfir. They went into the extremes of the text, forgetting about the text, everyone, that's pertaining to what? The rahmah of Allah. Not taking between those texts a proper balance. Then we have the opposite of the extreme as we mentioned last class, the opposite side of the spectrum, which is what they call what? The, the wa'idiyah. Then you have the people what? Irjah. The people of Irjah. Where no matter what a Muslim does and what they commit, they're complete in their faith and they're guaranteed paradise and their faith is always complete and to the point where they remove actions from faith. And that even the obligations, the obligations are removed and the acts that they're supposed to avoid, they commit them. And at the same time, your faith is just like the faith of the prophets and the messengers. Rather, it's of the faith of Jibreel. Complete, no matter what you do. Especially in these days and times where it comes in another form. You, I'm sure that some of us have heard Muslims say, I don't have to pray, faith is here. I don't have to go to Jumu'ah, don't do I have to carry out my obligations or my priorities with my Lord because faith is here at the end of the day. And that basically, Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. I don't have to have a girlfriend. Oh, uh, uh, girlfriend, yeah, yeah, that's okay, ya khif. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ghafoor Rahim. Oh, I don't have to look Muslim. I don't have to pray. I don't have to do anything. All those matters are what? Connected with the heart. Faith is here. Not realizing that's a statement of ignorance. That if Iman has truly penetrated your heart, it will be exemplified clearly in your actions. And that if Iman is truly sound in your heart and it's truly penetrating your heart, that affair will be recognizable and clear upon your performing, your acts and your duties, your uprightness with your Lord. As you'll find that the poet says in his poetry, said, He said, Do you disobey Allah? Even though you claim you love him. Ta'sul ilah wa tudhir hubbahu. You verbalize it. Oh, Allah is ghafur rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me. Even though I'm coming up short in these obligations, at the end of the day, faith is here. 
He said, you now manifest love for him. That's even unacceptable and an analogy. If your love was true, you will obey him. Verily, obedience for the person you love, for the one who claims they love, is what? Is obedient, meaning it's clear in their actions. In the muhibli may yuhib mutiru. The love that you claim, and the person that claims they love them, and the one you said you love, they obey them. And they treat them what? Kindly and what have you, even amongst the creation. We know that even amongst the creation, the mere claim to say you love someone even though you mistreat them, is unacceptable. Your actions speak louder than your words. You clearly see in your actions something else is being implemented. Even though you verbalize it a hundred times. That we know every day I will love with Allah and Bayna. As you'll find that the great Iman, Sheikh Muhammad Iman Jami used to say this all the time. Every claim that's verbalized has to have something that substantiates it. Has to have some evidence for it. No matter how much you say it. Every claim has to have some type of what? Something of evidence clear that substantiates your claim and validates it. No matter how much you say it. You say it upon your tongue, your actions have to what? Has to be in accordance to what you're claiming. And we know, everyone, that the actions speak louder than words, and they conform with it. And they show whether or not the person is being truthful, or they're just merely lying. That's the reason why, like we said, these type of statements, that I don't have to pray five times a day, but I love Allah, and Allah is ghafur rahim, is something that we said is from the people of Irjah. Where they don't believe that actions is from faith, and they believe no matter what you do, of acts of evil, or what you avoid of acts of obligations, your faith is still complete, regardless of the fact. That's the opposite side of the extreme of the what, everyone? Of the khawadj. So you see how the devil at every time and every place plots against the children of Adam to either allow them to fall into what? Ifrat, or fall, allow them to fall into what? Tafrit. Either being too hot, or either being too what? Too cold. And the only way, that one of the ways that one avoids these traps the satanic, sadistic trap set by the devil is by ilm. It's by knowledge of what, inshallah, we're disseminating now. Is it clear, everyone? Good, let's keep going. So you have the wa'id, the wa'idiyah, and then you have the what? The people of irja. Ir, irja. Irja means ta'khir. Ta'khir means to put off, or put off for later, or put far away. It means all those meanings. Even in the language of Arabic, they still use it. They say, Nurji'uhu fi mabad. He said, We'll put it off later. We'll, we'll do it later. So, Nurji'uhu fi mabad. Yani no akhiruhu ila waqt akhir. That we'll, we'll, we'll put it off and put another time for it. That's technically the linguistic meaning, but however, what they intended by it is what actions being removed and put off. Is it clear? Actions. And that actions is not from what? From faith. We know the statement of Hassan Basri, rahimallah. And this puts everything in. Proper perspective based upon the profound statement of the great Imam Hassan Basri, Rahimallah, where he said, He said, Laysa al Iman bit Tahalli wa Tamalli, Walaka ma waqara fil kalb, was soddakahu al Ama, ma waqara fil kalb, was soddakahu al Ama. He said, Iman is not by just merely claims and hopes, and one day I'll do. He said, It's what penetrates and settles in the heart, and the actions confirm it. What settles in the heart And your actions confirm it So it's totally Inconceivable that now A person would claim that they love Allah And like we said If you look to their actions The, the actions brothers and sisters Is the measuring stick of your claim Your actions are what you do of implementation And what you do Of the actions of evil If you want to know how you are with your Lord Look to your actions That's your measuring stick that's your measuring stick of your faith. That's your measuring stick of putting in perspective whether or not your actions are conformity to your claim verbally. Is it clear, everyone? Good. Excellent. But let's keep going. Let's keep reading. قال ابن الخفيش شيخ الإسلام تيمية رحم الله But everyone understand the affair of the wa'idiyah and the affair of the irja generally. There's more details than that but we'll suffice with that. There's a little bit more. Even during the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu we have this was the moqif of the Sahaba. Rather, it was the position of the of the, of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu 
What happened with the Sahabi who fell into drinking? We know the hadith. What happened? They did establish the prescribed penalty for him. It says some of us would beat him with his clothes and some of us with our shoes until one of the companions cursed him with his said, May a curse of Allah be upon him. He said, Ma akthara ma yutabihi ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la tal'anu. Innahu la yuhib Allah wa rasulah. He said, don't curse him. Verily, I know he loves Allah and his master. That's to let one know that his, also his faith was what? There. However he became weak. غَلَبَتَ عَلَيْهِ نَفْسُهُ His self, his self of, his, of his nafs took precedence and got the best of him. However the message of Allah what? That his iman or the affair of the had or the prescribed punishment was a form of purification. Purified him. And he's still a great sahabi. Radiallahu anhu. Himal, that was the name of the sahabi anyway. But however, the message of Allah, when he fell into it, did he de- declare him to be a kafir? Absolutely not. Rather, the message of Allah said, don't curse him. I know he loves Allah and his message. Is it clear, everyone? Innahu la yuhibbu Allah wa rasulah. Tayyip. وَقَالْ أَصْلُ الْإِمَانِ Let's keep going. The origin of faith. وَقَالْ أَصْلُ الْإِمَانِ مَوْهِبَةً أَفْعَالٍ مَوْهِبَةٌ يَتَوَلَّدُ مِنْهَا أَفْعَالَ الْعِبَادِ فَيَكُونْ أَصْلُهُ التَّصْدِيقِ وَالْإِقْرَارُ وَالْأَعْمَالُ وَذَاكَرَ الْخِلَافِ فِي زِيَادَةِ الْإِمَانِ وَنُقْصَانَهِ وَقَالْ قَوْلُنَا أَنَّهُ يُرِيءُ أَفْوَانْ يَزِيدُ وَيَنْقُصُ So keep in mind, we just covered the affairs of Aqa'id based upon Shaykh al-Islam citing the statement of who everyone? Ibn Khafif. He mentioned affairs of the pertaining to the Khawarij, pertaining to the Qadr, pertaining to the, the Imama, or the Khilafah rather, or the Imam, he called the Imam to be more precise. Imama, the affairs of the sinners who fell into the kabahir, what's the proper names we give them, what's their ruling, are they outside the fold of Islam, are they considered in the fold of Islam, to the end of it. So now he's moving on to another affair. So Shaykh al-Islam goes on to say, citing the statement again of Ibn Khadif, وقال, he said, أصل الإيمان موهبة يتولد منها أفعال العباد. Excuse me. فيكون أصله التصديق والإقرار والأعمال وذكر وذكر الخلاف في زيادة الإيمان. He said the origin of faith. He said is a mohiba. We'll talk about the meaning of that. Meaning, it's something of a gift from Allah. Is it clear, everyone? That the origin of faith is something that Allah gives as a gift for a person. To plant iman in their heart. يَتَوَلَّدُ مِنْهَا أَفْعَالْ الْعِبَادِ He said, what comes as a result of it, the actions of servants. So that plant, that seed is there, what sprouts out from it? The actions. If it's sound, certain actions will sprout out from it. He said that the origin of it is a tasdeeq. Don't worry, we want to explain all this. At-tasdiq wal iqrar He said, of course, confirmation, belief, and actions. Then he mentions some of the khilaf, and he's not talking about the khilaf between Ahl Sunnah. He's talking about khilaf of the Muslims who were, they have generally, they have Islam with them, however they fell into somewhat perverted beliefs. They went astray in certain regards, in certain aspects. So when a person reads this book and he's talking about khilaf, he's not talking about khilaf between Ahl Sunnah and Aqaid. That's not what he's speaking about. He's talking about the Muslims generally, that they they generally have Islam, but they deviated from certain paths until they adopted the perverted ideologies of the deviant sects and answered their call. So that's what he's speaking about. طيب. He said, فِي زِيَادَةَ الْإِيمَانِ Whether of faith increasing or decreasing. 
And he said, our statement is that it what everyone? Faith, it increases, and it what? It decreases. It increases, and it decreases. And it's not one affair. Meaning, that's just one level, no matter what you do, or matter what you say. That's the affair of the, of the Khawarij and the Murjia, both. And that you'll find that they agree in that affair. What do I mean by that? The people of the Khawarij, they, they think that Iman is like totally like what? One element. If one is removed, all of it's gone. You understand? The Prophet ﷺ refuted that by saying that actions are what? Branches. They're branches. Furu'ah. And if one is removed, that does not necessitate that all of it is what? Gone. Nor similar to the irja, the people, the murja. Same thing. They think, regardless, once it's stable, even if one, which doesn't make sense, if gone, it still remains what? Completely intact. Which also is, is contradictive. So both of them fell into some type of the same thing, even though it's the total opposites. You understand? So that's the affair. The people of the Sunnah believe that your faith what? Yazid, what? What is? Yankus. It increases, it decreases. Yazid with ta'a. Yazid with, with obedience with Allah. And all those are matters of the commands that Allah has obliged upon us to carry out daily. And those who have tasted iman, tasted how obedience increases your what? Your diligence. And your faith. And they taste when your faith is starting to become what? Slightly off and weakened. Based upon the actions and based upon certain things that you were committed to doing consistently. And then eventually it started to what? Become somewhat weakened or when one forgets. And they become neglectful. Neglectful. Or in certain instances, heedless in those matters that they used to do consistently. Now it became something that became inconsistent. Oh, wow. Certain things that are signs to let one know when your strength is climbing and then it start to become what? In a state of decline. That is the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah in regards to what? These acts and beliefs and for based upon the fact of what one commits of good and righteousness backs in the acts of obedience and the effects, the negative effects of disobedience. As we know, the positive effects of obedience is clear. But we know that the, the effects of disobedience of Allah's Messenger have very detrimental and negative impact upon what? One's faith. And not just their faith, but their soul also. And affairs pertaining to their hereafter and their state of their hereafter. For all those things play a part with those positive effects and at the same time the what? The negative ones. Is it clear, everyone? And I'm sure that everyone is familiar with all the effects of ta'ab. Which Ibn Qayyim elaborates on that affair in great detail. It depicts it in a very, very detailed manner in that book called Dawa Dawa. How faith and how obedience it strengthens your faith, strengthens your intelligence, strengthens your awareness, it strengthens your discernment, it strengthens so many different things. And it, it brings those type of good to you. And it allows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you that ease when the time comes when you need it. And then the opposite the negativity of the sins and how it has an impact on your life. And it just does oh I'm sorry. Also the impact and the negative impact of sins. How can it affect your life? It can affect your physical, it can affect your intelligence, it can affect your memory, it can affect your family, it can affect your children, and it can affect your society, and it can affect your community. That all those affairs are what? The negative impacts of the, dis the disobedience of Allah's Messenger. You'll find that the great Imam Ibn Qayyim wrote in that book all the different types of effects. Of whether they be negative, whether they be positive. And how the positive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses your wealth, blesses your health, blesses your children, blesses your family, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on of the positive effects of obedience of Allah's Messenger. 
So those are the type of matters that like you said, everyone, which is from the statement of Ahl Sunnah, is that they believe that faith, what it increases, and there's an incline, and there's times where what it declines. Until certain aspects, if one is not aware of this, of this state, then one can be subjecting themselves to very evil sickness and not be aware of it. We also have to protect us from you from that. We are, a lot of us are aware of our physical ailments. But are we aware of the ailments of the heart when it becomes sick? That's the affair that's an emergency. We don't hesitate to go to hospitals when we feel something very uncomfortable in our body. Something cr- crazy or something very uncomfortable happens. We immediately don't hesitate to attend the hospital or look for a doctor. Do we treat the same affair but pertain it to our hearts? That when you feel some type of sickness in your heart, something of discrepancy, that I was used to doing something, now I'm not doing it anymore. And that I was obedient, now it's, it's not there anymore. Or something happened with a relationship with a, with a person close to mine, now it's not the same anymore. Or certain other negative impacts and effects that used to be something good, but you're not aware of that because a lot of people don't take the time to examine the state of their heart. Nor use the measuring stick to amount and equate to the state of your heart by looking at what everyone? Your actions. To looking at the actions, looking at the uprightness, and looking at the disobedience, and seeing what's going on with my heart and examining that at night. To see whether or not my faith is strong, or if it's on an incline, or it's on a what? Decline. That affair needs to be what? Examined and scrutinized at all times. Because that's a fair that determines your well-being and your state and your hereafter and your grave. And on the day of resurrection. Based upon the examination of the state of your heart. That's the reason why Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah believes that faith, what everyone? It increases with the obedience of Allah. And it decreases what? That it increases, decreases with the disobedience of Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us upon this niqam. Play, so let's keep going. So we mentioned the statement of Ibn Khafif, rahimahullah. What Shaykh al Islam was citing. And he said, وَقَالَ ثُمَّ كَانَ الْإِخْتِلَافِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ This is what he's talking about the other. But let's talk about this one first. <clears throat> the origin of Iman is a mohibah. The origin of faith is, is a gift from Allah. Iman al-Qalb. Which is to have that firm belief of tasdiq al-jazim. Of course that, that firm that firm belief which has no hesitation in it, no reluctancy, or no doubt rather. <clears throat> the word tasdiq, if you notice in, the, in your book, if you look at it, use the word tasdiq. Tasdiq. You'll find that the great Imam, Imam, not Iman, I, Imam, Muhammad, the great Imam, Muhammad Amal Jabi, Rahimallah, he goes on to say, explaining the statement. He said, Hadha tasdiqu laysa mutlaq tasdiq. He said, it's not absolute tasdiq, meaning uh, that tasdiq, what type of tasdiq everyone means, like that, that firm uh, belief, or that firm faith, right? That tasdiq is something exclusive. He said the tasdiq, or what is intended here, is a tasdiq al khas. He said it's an exclusive belief. Iman, linguistically, everyone, means tasdiq, a firm belief or firm conviction. A firm belief or firm conviction. He said this needs to be restricted, however, because not every Tasdiq is considered proper iman. Not every conviction is considered proper faith. Is it clear, everyone? However, he's speaking about an exclusive type. 
He said, meaning the exclusive type, but what he's speaking about here is what brings you close to Allah, such as your fasting, such as, for, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, everyone, such as even he uses the example, for example, uh, another example. He said, when a person hears Siyam, they don't realize linguistically it means something else. Siyam just means to abstain from something. It can mean abstination from speech. It can be abstination from, from a lot of things. However, when a person hears it in the Kitab and Sunnah, it means to refrain from food and drink and abstain from, from obscene behavior and actions, and evil actions, of course. So you'll find there's a, there's a general meaning and there's a, what a, a specific meaning. And that's what he's speaking about here. So what are you speaking about, about Iman or Tasdiq here? What is the exclusive Iman he's speaking about? Ayyushay Sadaqt. What is the thing you firmly have that conviction in? Al Iman for Shara' Aslu Tasdiq. That specific exclusive Tasdiq is what? The statements and the actions what? Affirm. And this is the definition. He said the exclusive belief, he says, is the belief that your actions and statements confirm it. يُصَدِّقُهُ الْقَوْلُ وَالْعَمَلُ أو الْفِعْلُ Statement with the tongue, of course, but one has to profess it, verbalize it, no doubt. However, those affairs are exemplified, where everyone? On your body, meaning in your actions. That if you truly say that you believe in Allah and His Messenger, that affair has to be implemented in your actions. So if the law donates proper faith in your heart, which is the best of gifts that Allah can give a human being, is to open his heart up to proper belief. Because there's not there's millions of people that are astray. This type of tasdiq of firm conviction has to be confirmed by the actions, no doubt. A statement with the tongue. That is what? The exclusive faith of what we're speaking about based upon the statement that I just mentioned a moment ago. The statement of al hasan al-Basri rahimahullah where he said, faith is not by mere claim and by hoping in one day I'll do it. Nor by tahalli. Nor just, just merely outward. Sweet types of appearances only. However, it's what settles and penetrates in the hearts and the actions confirm it. ما وقر في في القلب وفي القلوب وصدقته الأعمى وصدقته الأعمى were penetrated and settled in the heart and the actions what everyone the actions confirmed it the great Imam he goes on to say that this speech is tremendous he said وهو يعرف لك الإيمان الشرعي الإيمان الشرعي يبدأ من إيمان القلب بشرط أن يكون إيمان القلب مصدقا بالأفعال بالأفعال والأقوال. He said this now gives you a proper definition of the le- the legitimate legislative meaning of iman, which is what everyone. The legislative meaning of iman starts with the faith of the heart, with the condition that the iman of the heart is being confirmed by the actions and the statements. You'll find that the statement of the Salaf, what they used to say, this profound statement, which is what everyone? وَإِذَا حَلَّتَ الْهِدَايَةُ قَلْبًا نَشِطَتْ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ الْأَعْضَاءُ Tremendous statement. Four words, five words, and it's tremendous. It has a, a great impact and a, and a great meaning. He said that if guidance has penetrated the heart of a human being, it's truly settled in it, then the limbs become active then the limbs become active. What does that mean? Meaning the righteous actions will reflect of the sound faith that you possess in your heart. فِي الْعِبَادَةِ الْأَعْضَاءُ نَشَاطُ الْأَعْضَاءُ Having that desire and that enthusiasm of what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Clear indication of the sound, of the, of the sound state of one's heart and its faith. والانصراف والإعراض عن الله وعدم الرغبة فيما عند الله وعدم النشاط في في القرب دليل على عدم صحة ذلك الإيمان الذي هو التصديق. He said this affair of what he said to have that that diligence and have that desire and that eagerness 
with with Allah is an indication for the sound state of one's heart and their faith that is penetrated and settled. He says, and turning away, and, and turning away, and going away from Allah, and not having that great eagerness and enthusiasm with, it was with, 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 of what is with Allah, and not being active and drawing close to Him in those actions, is a delil that one's faith is not sound. It's incorrect. And that is the firm belief of what they call tasdeeq, which is the what? That firm conviction. Is it clear, everyone? So far? Good. Then you'll find that Ibn al-Khafif. Oh, is it time? Oh, we got five minutes. Okay. So it says, وَذَكَرَ الْخِلَافِ زِيَادَةَ الْإِمَانِ وَالْإِقْصَانِ Then he mentioned the khilaf, and we talked about this, not the khilaf between Ahl al-Sunnah and I'tiqad. He's talking about the Muslims generally who deviated, even though generally they have Islam with them. He said, وَذَكَرَ الْخِلَافِ فِي زِيَادَةِ الْإِيمَانِ وَنُقْصَانِ وَقَالَ قَوْلُنَا أَنَّهُ يَزِيدُ وَيَنْقُصُ قَوْلُنَا نَحْنُ مَعَاشِرُ الْجَمْهُورِ أَهْلِ الصُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ الْإِيمَانِ يَزِيدُ وَيَنْقُصُ عِنْدَنَا He said, then he mentioned, of course, of the pertaining to how Iman increases and decreases. He said, our statement is that that's the affair. Meaning, those who are upon what's correct. And those who want to meet Allah in a sound state, and those who want to meet Allah on the day of resurrection, and they, if their belief is intact, and their iman is intact, is that they believe that their faith increases and it decreases. And he said, with us, meaning with the people of the sunnah and the people who want to traverse that path and be firm upon it. From those who went astray and adopted those perverted ideologies. He said, إِنَّهُ لَا يَزِيدُ وَلَا يَنْقُصُ Meaning those who claim that it doesn't increase nor decrease. However, you'll find that the great Al-Alama Ibn Al-Qayyim رحمه الله He said, قَالَ عَبْدَ الرَّحْمَانِ Ibn Abi Hatim سَأَلْتُ أَبِي وَأَبَا زُرْعَةِ يَرْحَمَكِ اللَّهِ وَأَبَا زُرْعَةِ عَنْ مَذْهَبِ أَهْلِ الصُّنَّةِ فِي أُصُولِ الدِّينِ وما أدرك عليه أئمة العلم في ذلك فقال أدركنا العلماء في جميع الأمصار حجازا وعراقا وشاما ويمنا فكان من مذهبهم الإيمان قول وعمل يزي وينقص تنا أنا ودي جري إمام الإعلام ابن القيم مثل نزب قال الفوائد ابن القيم اللي مثل نزب قال الرحمة بربي حاتم الجري إيمان الجري إيمان of the people of the Sunnah that we know, Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Hatim, his son. His father, of course, was Abu Hatim al Razi, the great Imam. He said, I asked my father, Abu Hatim al Razi, the great Imam. And I asked also in his family, the two Raziyan, who's who, everyone? Abu Zura. Upon the madhhab of Ahl Sunnah and the foundation of the religion, he said, Wa ma adaraka alayh a'immatul ilm. With those who are firm upon firm knowledge, with, with sound knowledge and sound belief, that if a person wants to die in a sound state, where the angels are pleased with them, and that they meet Allah in that state also, and that they are upon that affair and their belief, they both said, we've reached the scholars in all of the great cities where knowledge came from, which is in Hijaz, which is in Mecca, in Medina, in those great places where the affair started. And then when it branched off to Iraq and Shan and Yemen, that their madhab are those who are upon the correct understanding that our faith is statements and its actions, and that it increases and decreases. And they knew that what? That faith is implied in there, of course, with the proper conviction. Is it clear, everyone? Almost finished for today. He said, وَزَعَمُوا إِنَّ الْإِيمَانِ إِمَّا مُجَرْدَ التَّصْدِيقِ أو التصديق والقول معا. Then it's the last thing that we'll stop, inshallah. Those who oppose what was the correct faith. Now all these affairs are substantiated in what comes in the book of Allah and the son of the message of Allah. And I'm sure that when we have some time, next class we'll speak about some of those texts and bring some of the evidences. But it's known in those verses that we know and we memorize and the narrations that we'll bring, inshallah. Those who oppose Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, you'll find that they say, for example, that faith is just mere belief. It's just mere conviction. That's it. Or they'll say that it's 
conviction and statements together. And it does not increase nor decrease. And that that increasement or that proliferation or that decreasement or that decline or that weakness, you'll find that they do not believe in that. مَا يُؤْمَنُ بِهِ or مَا يُؤْمِنُ بِهِ الْعَبْدِ what the person, of course, meaning the proper servant of Allah, what he believes. They say that that's his affair. It doesn't, agree, doesn't increase, doesn't decrease. There's no incline, there's no decline. None of those affairs are what? Existing. All oh, that's absolute nonsense. Those matters that's pertaining to how faith climbs and the inclines and that decline, everyone knows this matter. And this was the statement of the Messenger of Allah. We'll talk about the companions that also mentioned the statement. قَالَ بَعْتُهُمْ وَهَذَا الْقَوْلِ أُلِّفَتْ فِيهِ كُتُبْ وَاخْتَلَفَ النَّاسِ فِي هَذِهِ الْمَسْأَلَةِ وَلَكَنْ عِنْدَ التَّحْقِيقِ الْخُلْفُ فِي مَا يَبْدُوا خُلْفٌ جَوْهَرِي And this is what we'll talk about the deviant sect called the مُرْجِئَةُ الْفُقَهَاء And that was what happened to Abu Hanifa. Next class, we'll talk about that separately because I need some time to bring some details in that regard. But what he fell into was called Murjihatul Fuqaha. Murjiah al Fuqaha. Something of which Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, of what they say about him in this regard. Next class, I'll speak about that in more detail. His affair, what was pertaining to him, was lighter of what was considered of the people of Irja. Where the, the khulf for the difference was in the mere wording. Not the fact that he believed that actions is not from faith. He did not believe that. But it was in the actual wording that was used. And that's the affair that we'll speak about next class when we get to some, some more time. So, that is the matter summarized was pertaining to the belief of Ahl Sunnah in this regard, based upon the statement of who everyone, Ibn Khafif, that the great Imam Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah was cited. He was mentioning his statement. Don't worry, I'll show you up in class. So, basically, he was mentioning this statement due to the fact that those who are upon Tasawwuf, Shaykh al Islam is saying, This is a scholar of your own, saying exactly what we say, and believing the exact same thing that I'm teaching. Why are you not believing it? And this is your own scholar saying it. And this is the affair that those who want to practice the pure Islam are upon. This is their belief and your own revered scholar saying it. So why are you not following it? He believed it as far as in, in creed, in regards to the affairs of the people of major sins, or what's their, their ahkam, affairs of imama, the affairs pertaining to belief as far as that, how it increases and decreases to the end of it. That's what Shaykh al-Islam basically was mentioning here. But he's mentioning more detail. But this is what he was trying to establish upon those who generally have Islam, but they fell into what? Some opposition. Based upon the fact that they either was beguiled or tricked by evil scholars or not educated properly. Which is the state of a lot of Muslims these days. In a lot of different lands. Where they're not being taught or educated properly or they're being deceived by improper scholars that claim that they're scholars, but they're not upon the proper creed. This type of matter is Yusuf, that he took the opportunity and initiative to elaborate on and explain. Is it clear so far, everyone? So then he goes on to say, before we stop, the last statement, ثم قال ثم كان الاختلاف في القرآن وجد كان هنا تامة ثم كان الاختلاف أي وقع الاختلاف في القرآن مخلوق أو غير مخلوق Then he said, now Ibn Khafif the least similar to what the people of the Sunnah believe in regards to the Qur'an. He said that what the Muslims have, had also abandoned in that regard until they fell into what Allah declared as ikhtilaf. Ikhtilaf means those who abandon the truth. Mina abandoned the clear text of what Allah has sent down in the kitab and the Sunnah. That's considered ikhtilaf. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned in his book. That the affair of, for example, the ayah, if you go back to the Qur'an, if you go back to Surah Al-Baqarah, كَانَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا فَبَعَثُ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ وَبَشِّرِينَ وَمُذِينَ For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the, the mankind was one ummah. Meaning, from the time of Adam, from 10 centuries that came afterwards, all the way to when Allah sent Prophet Noah, Nuh, 
That 10 centuries, notice Allah said that they were united. If you go back to the tafsir of Amina, they were united in creed and belief. And that they were far away from idolatry and polytheism. And Allah considered that uni- true uni- unity and unification. Not based upon satanic beliefs of idolatry and paganism and affairs that Allah is everywhere and in everything. We can never unite upon those affairs, ever, and that Allah will bless those matters at all. Nor we will unite with them. Those type of affairs, everyone, Allah the Christ declared that the affair of the whole of mankind were unified based upon how they were unified in monotheism for those 10 centuries. And he said when idolatry came, when the people started practicing paganism and idolatry, Allah said, that he, in another ayah it says, that the mankind was united and they differed. Meaning when they started to adopt all types of atrocities in their conviction and belief, they fell into what Allah condemned, which is differing. So the affair of differing is pertaining to what? What goes against the proper belief and creed. Once a person deviates from that affair, that's considered ikhtilaf. And the affairs of what's the most greatest of all matters, which is in belief. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had now preferred and blessed the people and the Muslims to be unified in those type of affairs. Which is in the affairs of aqai, which is from the greatest of gifts that Allah can bestow upon humanity. That they be united in their belief system. Because that will unify the hearts and the bodies together physically. And the hearts won't curse each other, and it will just be a mere facade where people are just numbers and knowing that they hate each other in their hearts. That's because of the difference in their belief system being affected. But once the people now adopt what the affair was during the time of those 10 centuries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. When Adam fell into this cursed dunya and those 10 centuries of what came, of all the people that are upon monotheism, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called that unification. Based upon the people upon proper worship, proper iman, and proper creed. Is it clear, everyone? Good. So if you go back, I'm sorry, it's time for the event. Okay, somebody come to the event. طيب, so you'll find that he, he continues to say about the matter pertaining to the Qur'an and what's the mu'kif, what's the position or the proper position about the Qur'an. He said you'll find that what happened of the ummah when they fell into ikhtilaf in the Qur'an, like we talked about, he's not talking about ikhtilaf amongst other sunnah. He's talking about the Muslims who Generally have Islam, but they deviated from the proper belief. طيب. He said, مخلوق أو غير مخلوق. Is it created or not created? هل القرآن مخلوق أو غير مخلوق? He said, هذا الذي وقع بين الطوائف وبين أهل الصنة يعني وبين الذين زاهوا Those who deviated. So he's also speaking about this, this matter. And like we talked about to this day, a lot of people think that the time of the Qur'an being created and those matters pertaining to it is over. It's not. Still people to this day that believe the Qur'an is created. From them is the Isha'ira. The Isha'ira to this day believe the Qur'an is created. Also, you'll find from the Mufti of the Umman, whose name is Khalili. And I, from I remember, he's still alive. He still believes that he has the Aqeedah of the Mu'tazila. And all of the Shia and the Rawafid to this day have the Aqeed of the Mu'tazila. All of them. The Rawafid have the Aqeed of the Mu'tazila. All the Asha'ira believe the Qur'an is created. The Asha'ira believe the Qur'an is created. They still have that belief to this day. There's a Mufti in Uman, a country called Uman. Uman. Everybody's familiar with Uman? The country. <laughs> The country called Uman, there's a mufti there named Khalili. Khalili believed the Quran was created. I think he's still the mufti of Uman to this day, and I have to check. But the great Imam of, of Ahlul Sunnah today, he's still alive. The great Imam, alhamdulillah, attended a lot of his classes. Shaykh Ali Nasr Faqihi, Hafidullah, he's still alive. Shaykh Ali Nasr Faqihi, he's still teaching the Haram. He has a whole book called Al-Rad al 
It's, it's a refutation against Khalili and his claim that the Quran is created. Your father, Shaykh Ali Nasr Fapihi, Hafizullah, he wrote the book about 2003, 2004, around that time. And I think the book, yeah, the book is still, I don't know if it's still published, but I have the book. It's a thick book. But at any rate, Shaykh Ali Nasr Fapihi, he wrote that book against Khalili, who was the Mufti of Uman. And like I said, I don't know if he's still retired or if he's still the Mufti or not. But he believed the Quran was created in these days and times. So a lot of people think, oh, there's all you others, Sunni, oh, it's wasting time talking about the Quran is created. No, it still exists to this day. There's still Muslims out there to believe this, this type of wicked belief. And as a result of it, a lot of scholars of other Sunni were killed, tortured, and persecuted based upon their belief. So a person might say, oh, it's a waste of time. No, it's still around, it still exists. And there are a lot of Muslims had to believe the aqidah of the Asha'ira. And the Asha'ira believe that the Qur'an is created. That's from their belief. That the Qur'an is makhluk. But we'll stop here, inshallah. We'll stop here. Talk about 121 minutes. Stop. But we'll stop here, inshallah, and continue next class. There's a question from someone. From someone. But also, brothers... People online, you have to be patient. If I'm speaking in, about a class, I'll tend to your question after the class is over. So don't be so hasty to say, did you see my question? I've seen it. But I'm still in the middle of doing a class. We, and we accept the questions after the class is over, inshallah. So I have some patience. So it says I was attending one match in Colorado. I remember a hadith saying that if I prayed already, and if, aren't, if you aren't the imam of the salah, you are allowed to give the Muslim brother charity, of course. Basically, the second jamaah. And that is from the evidences, what you just said. Absolutely. He's not the imam, he didn't lead the prayer. Or oh, there's no imam, there's official imam to lead the prayer. And then he wanted to give sadaqah to a person. Just be careful when you pray, because certain people don't know whether or not they're praying a nawafil or they're praying the obligatory prayer. Sometimes people walk in a mesh and they're praying. The nawafil, the person is playing something of, maybe, for example, greeting the masjid, and you're praying next to him. That doesn't make any sense. You understand? So just know for sure what the person is praying. You understand, everyone? So that's be clear, just to be clear. Don't just walk, assume, oh, I'm going to pray next to him. You understand? You can be praying the sunnah, you can be praying tahid to the masjid. So all of those probabilities are there. But if you know for sure, some of my comments says so and so. There's no imam, official imam here to read the prayer. It's one of those masala that's open. Come in, you pray. Oh, you know if they're praying? Yes, they're praying such and such prayer. Okay. Is it clear, everyone? Good. So, in brief, that's, uh, that's the answer. The brother who disagreed with me. So, no one, we don't want to look to who, where they came from. But that's the, that's the delil, and that's, alhamdulillah, that's the answer. Is it clear, everyone? Any, any other question about the lesson? Yes, I'm going to put up. Uh, when the people say that the Quran is created, uh-huh. ain't this a statement of hope? Absolutely. So, doesn't this take a person who say they're Muslim outside? Absolutely. Muslim? Absolutely. Okay. Generally. Yeah. But, like I talked about earlier in the class, we have to establish the proof upon a Muslim. Which is what they call istifa al shurut and tifa al mawani. Then you get to another, a whole other field. Which is the, the foundations or the criteria of takfir has to be fulfilled by bringing the proper conditions, establishing the proof, and removing the barriers that keeps them out of, that keeps them in the fold of Islam. Such as the, that they had evil scholars around them that deceived them. Or they were in an environment where an evil scholar deceived them. And they don't know. So a person comes, they didn't know, they've been in that environment. They come, the Quran is created. So now we have to what? Establish the proof on them. Bring the evidences, bring the proofs, bring and remove all those different probabilities before we rush to takfir. But generally, that's a statement of kufr, and that statement will remove you out of the Islam. Absolutely. No doubt. Any, anything else, anyone? To follow them. Mm-hmm. And then you went to say that that's exclusive to 
we talked about the, the exclusive meaning of tasdiq. Tasdiq can have a general meaning. That's the exclusive meaning. Anyone can have a tasdiq, have a, some type of conviction. Could have a conviction of kufr and firmly believe it. You understand? But so, well, we're talking about the exclusive affair, which is pertaining to verbalizing with the statement, and your actions are what? Confirming it. And your actions and your statements, of course. That's what we're speaking about. The, the specific exclusive conviction is the conviction that has settled in your heart and your actions and your statements confirm it. They're the confirmation for it. And a lot of Muslims forget that. That your actions substantiate for, for your claim and it also confirms the state of your belief in your heart. The measure stick is your actions. Of what you avoid, of what's forbidden, and what you're doing of obedience. That's the tasdiq that he's speaking about here in the book. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. That right there is a, is, is a gift. Absolutely. Say? He said in the statement, he said that the, that faith is a mohiba, lahu. He says it's a gift from Allah for, him, for a human being. He says a mohiba. A mohiba is like a gift. It's a gift that your heart be rightly guided. It's a gift from Allah that he gives to certain people. But certain people, the gift there, and they preserve it, and sometimes it's removed, may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us. It can be removed, that gift. And that's the most precious gift that a human being can, can receive, is that one's faith be, be intact and that they're rightly guided. He said, it's a, he mentioned that statement, he said it's a mohiba from Allah, it's a gift from Allah. Mohiba, lahu. Anything else, anyone? We've got, we've got about two more minutes. That's it. My favorite this time. It is time. Don't stop. صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك